the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you introduction we're doing now and i want to make sure i get that done real quick so that you can actually get into the words we'll break this the, the teaching uh into parts a b through d whatever and because we want you to be able to digest it right this is a study platform amen it, it, you know we always talk about the fact that we want to teach the gospel yeshua's way yeshua is jesus name in the hebrew that's what they called him back then yeshua and we want to go by what is written, just like when Christ was tempted in the wilderness, he, he dealt with the devil by saying what is written. The title we're talking about is your traditions of ignoring what God hates makes the word of no effect. And what I'm trying to tell you that is that in many cases we're trying to, uh, we, we, I mean, when you talk about what people have done the, the ministry of disqualification, the ministry of death. When we talk about people who have done uh, racism, we talk about lynching, we talk about uh, killing people uh, because they don't conform to what we consider Christianity. That, that Those are traditions of men to sit there to, to, to hurt people. Uh, you know, we did the crusade and the, the Spanish Inquisition and, and, and the militancy of what they call Christianity. And, and, and that's not teaching of Christ. Christ didn't teach violence. Christ didn't teach that you was to do. You'll find in the gospel where Christ taught you to do violence to people. He told you, he gave you a commandment to go and preach the gospel. And that's what we need to be able to do and not use the traditions of, of, of religious folks who sit there and try to intimidate you, hurt you, beat you up. And, and the bad thing about it is trying to impose a law on you that you don't even do, or they don't even do, excuse me. So the point is, we need to be able to get back to the doctrine and the teaching of Christ, not the traditions of men who makes the word, not, the word of God a matter of fact. And these are the scripture I want to go by. Your tradition. Well, our tradition should be his will. His will. That's what I'm sitting there saying is if you look at it. He says, verse 10. It says, thy kingdom come, thy will. Listen, ask yourself, as you profess to be a Christian, as you profess to be a child of God, are you advocating his will or the will of people or the will of this world? Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. That's what the scripture says. Give us this day our daily bread. That means daily. And the bread is once again the word of God. The bread is his will. Are you reading his will, studying his will, so you can act according to his will, not according to your political party, not because of the color of your skin, not according to where you came from, but his will. You know? Maybe when you bring people in that don't line up with the will of God, is to get them to start focusing and understanding and learning the will of God so they can do the will of God. You got problems with people that sit there that are drunk. You got people that have different sexual orientation. You got people that 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 are doing abortions and all that other stuff. Maybe if we get them and you, but especially those people you got issues with, to start reading the will of God daily, ingesting it into their hearts daily. That they are lined up according to the will of God and not according to your desire, according to your will. Can you that's what the problem is? Your will has no power. But his will has. And we just sit there and just remind each other and encourage each other and point toward his way. 
we too many times we try to point. That's the problem, right? We tell people to go to church and we point them toward a church building instead of pointing them toward Christ. It's not a point toward Christ. Thy will be done in earth as and give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debt towards. So many of us, especially if you're going to hate somebody, lift somebody, discriminate against somebody, you're not, you're not asking for forgiveness because you're not showing any forgiveness. You're not showing any love. Okay, I, I, don't, I don't say it. I don't say it. How, how can you sit there and say, forgive us our debts? You're asking the Father in heaven to forgive us of our debts, and yet you despise somebody because they don't line up the way you line up. They don't do. They, come, let me come off again for a second again. Let me sit there and say, you expect the Father in heaven to forgive you, and yet you do bad things to people because you don't forgive them. You're asking God, the Father, to forgive you of your debts. And think about it. As I forgive our debtors, as you forgive your debtors, and if you hate your debtors, despise them, do, do whatever you think you can to hold them down, to discriminate against them, that's what, that's the same forgiveness you're getting. Because how you treat somebody else is how you will be treated. How you forgive others is how you will be forgiven. That's what the scripture says. People, I don't care about some slick, charismatic preacher that tells you ignore that because they can't. They just talk around that. They immediately, you know how life goes, they immediately go after the messenger opposed to the word. Because there's no defense against the word. There's no, that's why you really get into this mob mentality and all that other stuff, because it's, it's operating out of the will of a person instead of the will of God. So if you don't forgive then you're not going to be forgiven either. That's what the scripture says. That's what the word of God says. That's what you just read. He, he taught us how to pray. If he teaches us how to pray, then the word it says. <laughs> if it gives us our debts, as we forgive our debt towards. As you forgive your debt towards, is how you will be forgiven. This is what you're saying. When you do the Lord's prayer. Lord, I, I I hate that man because of the color of his skin. Lord, I hate that man because he's rich. I hate that man because he's poor. I hate that man because he came from this country. I hate that man because he's an immigrant. You're not forgiven. Though. So therefore, you don't get forgiveness. And that's why I want to be able to talk today. Is the fact is that if you be in Christ, if God is your father, then you love your fellow man. You, you, you got that's a hard saying for some of you, isn't it? But that's the truth. We have to learn to love one another because we all got issues. We all need our debts to be forgiven. But if you don't forgive other people their debts, or the way you forgive other people's debt is the way you will be forgiven. Meaning you don't forgive them, you won't be forgiven. That's what scripture says. And look at this, it said, and lead us not into temptation. Lead us not into a test that we can't pass. Lead us to a test that we should be able to pass. But not a test we can't. Until we're ready. And some of us not ready. And therefore, if you're not ready, don't be sitting there posing on other people's will. This, this is, this, that's what I'm looking at, man. I look at the history and I saw the traditions of men. And the, the atrocities that men have done to one another. We need to understand, you're not doing the will of God, you're doing the will of man. If you're not doing the will of man, then you're not dealing with eternal life, you're trying to deal with death. 
but deliverance from evil. You can't, and that's one of the things I hold. Lord, let me come on to say again. This, this is a big one. Deliver us from evil. If you the one that's doing evil things, you're asking God the Father to deliver you from you. If you the one that's doing evil, you're asking for not to be delivered uh, led into temptation. Gotcha. Until you're ready for the test, you're gonna be tested. But the part I'm looking at is to, 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 be, to do evil tools. And you're asking God to deliver you from evil. And yet you being evil, you do evil things from systematic racism and from, from, from the thing I'm talking about with lynching or the murdering of people. You, and you're teaching your children to hate. You're teaching your children to be evil and you're asking God to deliver you or deliver people from evil and you're teaching people to be evil. God, you're not being delivered. You are the two evil. If you're doing it, that's what I'm saying. Is let's, let's, let's line up with his will instead of lining up with the world. Don't be evil. Don't be lukewarm. Don't sit there. We all, yes, we all got things to work on. And if we work on things, let's work on the things that, that deal with what need we need to deal with before we start getting into this condemnation of one another. This fault finding of one another. Let's focus on building each other up. Let's focus on praying for one another. Let's focus on pointing toward Christ instead of pointing to a church building. Let's recognize that you're the church. The Bible said when two or three gather the name, he's in the midst of them. So if you got you sitting there dealing with somebody, you and you coming in the name of Christ, Christ is there and you're the church. Minister to love. Minister his will. Instead of ministering condemnation. We all need help. We all do. I don't, I don't know about you. We all need help. Verse 13, we already just said it. Lead us not into, into temptation, but deliver from evil. So don't be evil. Because you can't sit there and ask to be delivered from something that you are. And you sit there and say, well, I'm not evil. Well, if you discriminate, if you have systematic racism, if you if you sit there and endorse the, 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 your, your parents' activities, your ancestors' activities, and, 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 and sit there and just recognize that as the way, if, you, if you're honoring evil people, you got some issues that you got to work on. He said, for thine is the kingdom. He's talking about his kingdom again, his system, not the world system. And his power, not black power, white power, brown power, yellow power, whatever power you want to call it. Real power is God. Many of you sit there and invest your life on this world. That you'll do anything in this world. That you forget the fact is that you can't take none of the stuff from this world, would you? I mean, can you? You can't take, you can't take, you can't take uh, gold, silver, you can't take your house with you. You can't take whatever you consider your masculine and political power or wealth power. You can't take that with you. That means it's everything that we value here shall be left here. You know, uh, for thine is the kingdom of power in the glory forever and ever. Amen. What I, what I, what I, to, to, to reemphasize that is, Many of us have invested. Talk about like, let's talk about the color scan. Let's talk about racism. Many of us have invested in the color of our skin. And have you ever noticed that that does not, when you, when people have passed away, whether they're white or black or Asian or Jewish or whatever, this body does not go with you 
if there's an afterlife. The Bible said there's a point in time for every man to die, then judgment. And in the time that you die, the clothes on your back, they that you hold, have, the they that you value, goes to somebody else. And if you don't have nobody to give inheritance to, then it goes to the state, and the state distributed to whoever can get it, or afford it. But you, you can't take nothing. You can't take this, you can't take this, this body with you. Like, oh, I gotta, I'm gonna get a glorified body. You ain't taking this body with you. And this body don't get glorified. <laughs> it, it still stays in this earth. And if you go, your soul go to hell, you, you ain't getting no glorified body. You're not gonna get a glorified body if you're not in Christ. And you sit there and put more of your investment on this world to the point that you do contrary to the will of God. That's the point I'm trying to say. If you do contrary to the will of God, if you do have hate, if you do got racism, if you do got uh, jealousy, if you do got unforgiveness, if you got all these things you need to work on, that you need Christ to help you work on it so you can bear good fruit. If you do not work on these things, then that means you're probably not trying to, you're not trying to get into Christ. You're trying to go, you're trying to do your own way. That you value so much, knowing that you can't take none of this with you. There's no, most rich people, the, 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 I was talking the other day <clears throat> about the Egyptians. Some of the pharaohs, some of the kings, some of the noble people, they had these big old pyramids and their stuff and their wealth and the treasure was buried with them. And it's still there. Or been robbed and put in museums. Or burnt and melted down for wealth and gold. It didn't go with them. The color of the skin, the melon in the body, didn't go with them. Whether they had melon or not melon. It didn't go with them. If you go dig up somebody's grave today, their that that color skin, whether it's Caucasian, African, Asian, you go dig up people who are dead today. Guess what you find? They're still there. They, they, I mean, this melon, this this thing that we have allowed ourselves to operate outside the will of God, to go against the will of God, because of the melon in our skin, or because of wealth. Or from where they came from, you still, those bodies, those people in the past, they're still there. They're still there. Many of us have get, sold our soul to the devil for something that is temporary. That's all I'm trying to say. I mean, it makes sense, doesn't it? It's a reality, isn't it? <laughs> go to your, go go dig up your old granddaddy. If he's in a casket that's, that's a solid, that's got a good seal on, go dig him up. And I guarantee you, <laughs> whether you're an African American, whether you're European American, whether you're a uh, Native American, this 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 that is still there. If it has a good seal in the casket. Yeah, there. Are you are you hearing the words that come out of my mouth? The color that some of you invested in so much, have elevated so much, doesn't even go with you when you die. Oh, well, I look, I know that what I look like is what you're gonna see in heaven. Excuse me. What? How do you know that? You been there? That's what we gotta think about. That we all gotta think about. How are we doing the will of God? His will be done. Excuse me. Gotta get this cold out of my body. But anyway, His will be done. That's what the Lord's Prayer is about. And one of the wills I want to make sure you know, if you are 
Christian. <laughs> if you possess, uh, profess yourself to be a Christian, then Christ gave us a new commandment. <clears throat> Maybe you didn't, excuse me on that. Maybe you didn't get that, but Christ gave us a new commandment. In John 13, 34, this is what the word of God says. And, and I, some of you should be bothered by this, especially if you're a racist or you submitted to the fear of a racist or you've been taught to be a racist. Whether you black, white, or any other group, ethnic group, if you're taught to hate your fellow man, but you profess to be a Christian, and I tell you, you go talk to your pastor. I don't care whether it's a female pastor or a male pastor or a priest. Ask them, what does the word say? I don't care what popes and dogma or anything else says. What does the word say? The word says in Christ, Christ gave us a new commandment. He said, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. And maybe you didn't catch the part of God's will and said in John 3, 16, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting Life. He said, Whosoever. He didn't say, Whosoever was this white. He didn't say, Whosoever was black. He didn't say, Whosoever was Hispanic. He didn't say, Whosoever was Jew. He didn't say, Whosoever. Limit is whosoever. And he said, Is new commandment given to you love one another as I have loved you. He loved everybody. He didn't restrict, restrict it to anybody. He said, This is what the scripture said. You read it for yourself. That you love one another as I've loved you, but you also love one another. 35, by this shall all men, that's why we want your light to shine. And you're sitting there doing systemic racism. You're sitting there teaching your children to hate. You're not letting people, people children are seeing what you're doing. The, 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 uh, the world is seeing what you're doing. Then they gonna sit there and say, you're not his disciple, because his disciples said, by this shall all men know that you're my disciples if you have loved one another. That's what the scripture says. You can't take it away. You can sit there and you go and you go to some church and everybody comes in agreement with you, and all of those people didn't die for you. None of those people sit there and they and are advocating for you after your death. Only Christ did that. And maybe, maybe if you don't believe in Christ, that's fine. Matter of fact, why don't you just stop calling yourself a Christian then? If you can't agree with his word, if you can't agree with God's will, maybe you need to stop calling yourself a Christian. Because you're not. If you're not trying to do his will. And I'm talking about the fact is, that no, I've been operating the grace and said, Lord, help me work on my area. You sit near, when you're talking about discrimination and everything, you talk about your area. You talk about you projecting your dislike and disdain for somebody else, and you think you're going to heaven. You think you're in Christ. He says right here, by this all men know you're my disciple if you have loved one another. And God said is, whether they want to hear it or not, whether they listen to it or not, somebody will. And that person will make sure that somebody hears it, that you hear it. He said by this, John 13, 35, by this shall all men know that you are my disciple if you have love to one another. He didn't say if you just have love to somebody that's Caucasian. He didn't say if you have love to somebody that's African American descent. He didn't say you have love to those people that are Jewish. He said that you, if you are his disciple, then you should love one another. And if you discriminate against somebody because of the color of skin, then you are not lined up with God's word. You're not lined up with his will. The Bible says, work out your own salvation. Focus on you. Not projecting you fault fighting on somebody. Come on, saints. Look at 2 Timothy uh, 2 4. He said, 
who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. That's, that's, that's his will is for all men to be saved. Many of you, especially when you talk about racism and everything else, that, that means you're not, you don't want other people to be saved. Because I can't, I can't imagine that that's what you, you, you advocate. If you sit there and been as evil as some of our history has shown. Many of those people, do you think, let me just make you understand that. How many of you think those people who did the atrocities that we've seen made postcards and, and, and did bad things to people, still doing, some people doing bad things even today. How many of those people you think are going to, are, are going to heaven? Why, why would you think they're going to heaven? Well, they may have Well, let's hope they did. Because if they didn't, they died in their sin. And guess what? They didn't die in Christ. But they died in their sin. Same thing for you. Same thing for me. Do we sitting there trying to go and hurt people while we need to work on our own issues? Come on, saints. Did you see Romans 14, 12? Look at that in the Bible. It says, so that every one of us shall give an account unto himself. So if you're teaching your children to hate, you're teaching your children that they got to give an account to that hate. And you're going to give an account to teaching that hate. And you're going to give an account for the hate that you gave. That, that, is that, is that something that that you want to uh, be responsible for? That's what you that's what you want. That's what you want to teach your children. That they will give an account for hate and discrimination and lies. That's what you want. I'm talking about everybody wanting you. I don't care whether you're white or black or brown or whatever. If you're teaching people to hate, if you're teaching division, if you're teaching selfishness, if you're teaching something contrary to the law that Christ gave, the commandment, the guidance that Christ gave, and then to those of you that live by the law, look at it. The fact is, there's two great commandments that all those things are wrapped up in. And Christ said it, and even the, the Hebrews said it. To love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, all thy strength. And the second one is back unto it. To love thy neighbor as thyself. If we don't get this message, if we don't understand the importance of loving one another, opposed to the importance of discriminating against one another, hate, opposed to the fact of hating one another, opposed to the fact of sitting there trying to do anything you can to keep somebody else down for what you think is important of this world, then you, you, why would you teach eternal death? Why? Why is it important to teach eternal death for eternal life? Why is it not important to teach your children, to teach yourself to grow and move from milk to, to meat? But some of you, if you you if you move with the doctors, you're not getting you're not getting any milk. You sit there and you go to a church building and you listen to what the man is saying. I hope the man ain't talking to you about hating people. I hope the man's not talking about discriminating against people. I hope the man is sitting there trying to you know, teaching you how to do bad things to people. I hope he's not. And I hope you're not advocating that. I hope you're not talking about putting people down and keeping people in a certain status because you feel comfortable with that. I hope not. I hope the person who listens to this in Montana, I hope the person who listens to this in Wisconsin, I hope they're not teaching the same old tired rhetoric of hate and vision and things that they're doing the will of God. I hope they're not. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you.